Hello I am Art Invader and welcome to my tutorial. Maybe you already know me. I am a digital artist from Berlin, Germany. I regularly post my art and short tutorials on my social media channels. Feel free to check them out. You can find the link in the caption. I want to turn my passion into a profession. Therefore it would be nice if you support me on Patreon. There you will find the project files to my YouTube tutorials. For a small financial surcharge, you also get access to my 3D models, which I use in my art. Thank you for your help. Now let's go to the tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this cool inflatable font animation, in the first part of the video, I will show you how to create the animation in C4D, in the bonus part of the video, I will explain how I edit my animations with Adobe After Effects, let's get started arties. First we create the text. For this we first search for mo text in the corner above. Under the category we write a word of our choice. I choose the word love and use the font Duncan for it. I link you the font in the caption. Under height, horizontal spacing and vertical spacing you can customize the font. At depth I choose 10 cm and at subdivision 3. At intermediate points you choose subdivided, so that the letters also inflate a little bit on the side. Now we change to the menu item caps. At caps type we choose regular grid and check the box quad dominant. At size we choose 3 cm, so that the front and back side are also divided into segments. Now we create a cube, which will later serve as a wall in the animation. The text must be completely enclosed by the cube and no corners must peek out. To see what happens inside the cube, we go to the basic settings and check the X-ray box. Select the Mo text and duplicate it as a safety copy, in case you want to change something later on. Make the text invisible with the following clicks. Now we select the visible Mo text and press the button on the top left to edit the text. As you can see, some layers have appeared now. Take out all letter layers. Then select connect in the top bar and connect each letter individually. Then press with the right mouse button and choose connect object plus delete. Repeat this for all letters. Delete all triangle icons from the layers. Now we create the animation with simulation tags. Right click on the cube and select under simulation tags, call it or body. In the menu collision choose under shape static mesh, the cube only serves as invisible wall. Now select one of the letters. Click with the right mouse button on it and select under simulation tags, soft body. In the menu collision select static mesh under shape, so that the cube is recognized as a collision object. In the menu item soft body, select 30 for structural and 35 for pressure. Pressure is responsible for how big the letters inflate. You have to see which value corresponds to your expectations the most. To keep the letters in their place, we have to switch off the gravitation. For this we go to edit at the top of the bar and go to project settings. Under the menu item dynamics we select 0 for gravity. Now duplicate the soft body tag for the other letters. Select the tag and hold down the CRLT key and move the tag with the mouse to the lower level. We will fix the now visible bumps later on. Now we come to the material. Double click to create a new material. We only need the reflectance channel. There you press the button remove and then add and insert a new Beckman layer. Set the value of specular strength to 5%. The first material is ready, you can drag it onto the letters. Now select sky at the top of the bar. So that we can see something, we have to create a new material. Drag it onto the sky. Here we only need the luminance channel. Under texture you can insert a picture of your choice. I choose an old graphic of mine. 
After that you press on the arrow icon and select layer. Now double click on the image. Under image you choose a HDR highlight. In the caption I link you to a website where you can download such lights for free. Set the blending mode to overlay and choose 64%. Now you have both skylights mixed together. At Patreon you can find the complete project file, I link you to my account in the caption. At the end we have to make some basic settings. To give the letters a nicer shape, we choose a cloth surface for each letter and set the factor to zero. As you can see in the animation, the texture on the letters moves as well. For this we have to animate the sky. First extend the animation duration to 5 seconds. Now select the sky and go to the menu item coordinates. Set a keyframe at rotation B by pressing on the point. Then move the animation slider to the end of the animation. Enter 360 degrees and press the point again. Now the sky rotates once around its own axis. To keep the animation running at the same speed we have to edit the animation curve. Go to window in the top bar and select timeline of curve. Select the curve under the sky and press on the icon at the top so that the animation runs linear. Now we come to the render settings. Press the button with the cog wheel on the top of the bar. Under render or select physical. Choose a suitable format and select frame range all frames. So that we can edit the animation later, we have to remove the background. So that we don't see the sky during rendering, we have to set the following three hooks under save. So that we get the file with a transparent background later, we have to select PNG under format. This is the only format that supports a transparent background. If you don't want to edit the animation anymore, you can position a colored plane behind the text. Finally we have to make the cube invisible during rendering. For this we go to the cube and select visible in render or off. That's it, the animation is ready to render. In the next part of the video I will show you how I edit the animation with Adobe After Effects. Double click the finished PNG sequence and paste it into Adobe After Effects. It can happen that the graphic is displayed darker than it actually is. This is due to the gamma value. To fix this problem, search for color and gamma conversion in the effects window. Under gamma conversion select linear to sRGB. Then look for the effect hue slash saturation. Under master saturation select the value 20. Then duplicate the layer and set the blending mode to multiply. Press the T key and set the opacity to 10%. Then select the bottom layer. Search for the effect Edge Glow. Under Edge Detect select 75%. Furthermore we set a check mark at Colorize and select a color from the logo at Tint Color. After that we search for the effect Drop Shadow. At Opacity we select 100%. At distance 0 and at softness 95. Now I add a background. For this we press with the right mouse button in the layer window. Under New, we select Solid. Then we choose a color of our choice with the pipette and move the layer all the way to the bottom. I also work with layers. For this I use this star animation. Position it above the animation. Duplicate the bottom animation layer and move it all the way to the top. For the star animation select alpha mat. Now you have only one star animation on the letters. Then set the blending mode to add. Now I put another destroy overlay and pause it when it on the animation. There we set the blending mode to lighten. 
Then we press the T key and reduce the transparency to 50%. Now select all layers and press the right mouse button and select pre-compose. The animation now runs quite fast. To slow it down, we press the right mouse button and select time stretch under time. There we stretch the animation to 145. Now we edit the animation to run in a perfect loop. For this we use the right click in the preview window. Under project settings we double the duration of the animation. Then we duplicate the layer. Press with the right mouse button and select time reverse layer under time. Now one part of the animation runs backwards. Move this part to the end of the animation. The animation is ready. Great job. I am happy about every support from you and thanks for the positive feedback. To make sure you don't miss a new tutorial from me, please subscribe to the channel. I try to upload 1-2 to two tutorials per week. See you in the next tutorial.